The skeleton fleet is considered one of the more challenging world events. The bigger the crew, the easier it is. But what if you are alone? How do you solo the fleet? You might be a skilled pirate that soloed these before, but there is so much detail here that will apply to all skills and make your battle even more manageable. Did you know that fleets come at different difficulties? That's why there is no rule of thumb on how to fight them. Sometimes they feel too easy, and at other times they make you feel like they are personally offended by your presence. But if you pay attention to the correct detail and understand their behavior, you will win. Bailing water out of a sloop is pretty easy and straightforward, so it's uncommon for someone to sink from that. In fact, it's all the other reasons that are usually the end of our sloop, like getting locked out of your supplies due to the cursed barrel ball, or positioning your ship in open waters while fighting, making yourself the center of attention. Highlighting the do's and don'ts will greatly improve the chance of surviving, like where to position your ship and which region the fleet is located in. That's what this video is about. I will show you how I soloed the skeleton fleet while being attacked by another reaper sloop and an extra skeleton ship. Also, only 34% of my viewers are subscribed, so please support the channel by subscribing if you enjoy my videos. Fuzzy here, bringing you honest guides and gameplays, so sit back, relax and enjoy. Before approaching, if you see the clouds in the distance, you need to keep a few things in mind, so you can know what to expect. Which region are they located in? For example, the wilds have a much higher tide than shores of plenty, making the amount of water pouring into the holes more. This calls to prioritize bailing over repairing. You are now approaching the area. As soon as the battle start banner appears, go to your map and mark a circle on your ship's current location. This is the edge of the ship's pathfinding which means they cannot leave this area. You can use this to your advantage. I will show you how later in the video. There is an additional difficulty indicator. The cursed icon at the bottom indicates what type of cursed cannonball you will be spawned with. Purple cannonballs, the ones that affect your ship, are all easy. For example, rigging ball. This raises your sails and slows the ship down. It's not much of a problem, as the ship needs time to go into a full stop. There is no curse timer on this. You can immediately drop your sails if raised. Or even the anchor ball. Do not raise anchor if dropped. The rate of firing these is high, so they will raise it for you if fired at a dropped anchor. Only focus on bailing and repairing. If you try and raise it, you will probably get a headshot or knocked off the ship. Which brings us to the number one rule you need to focus on. Whenever you are in the cannon range, stay at the main quarters in the bottom deck. No matter how good you are, nothing you can do about getting knocked off the ship or a cannonball to the head. It's the main reason why we lose these battles, as these are not players. They are aimbots. They will find you, and they will headshot you. Go to the bottom deck and simply bail until the cannon shots are over. As of recent updates, AI ships target mostly the ship's player and not the ship itself, which explains why your planks keep getting damaged over and over while repairing. But there's a trick if you really need to go to the helm section. You can minimize your exposed forehead time on the top deck using the ladder trick from the window. Choose the ladder further away from the ship to go up so you can use the hull to defend your character. Do your thing and back to the bottom deck as soon as you can. If you are on the right side, stand on the ammo box and look towards the ladder. If you are on the left side, you need to memorize where to stand by practicing. A few fireballs on the top deck of other ships are recommended to take down skeletons on the cannons. If you are caught off guard on their cannon range, aim at the top deck to prevent them from firing. But some of these cursed cannonballs are lethal, so we need to find ways around them. If it's a barrel ball, you will need your supplies separated mainly in storage crates, because the robot might drop if damaged. This way, you easily bypass their curse since it only locks the ship's original supply barrels. I usually do this either way, since you cannot predict their curse until you get there, rendering their barrel balls useless. Green cursed cannonballs are the bigger problem, they're the ones that affect the player, ones that fully disable you, and other ones that half affect you. I got the most challenging region with the highest waves in this video, but the cursed cannonball was a limp ball, one of the easier ones. This only slows down my movement, but I can still bail and repair. The sleep or dance balls are the worst, as that completely disables your ability to interact with your ship. And on rare occasions, even if you are a blackbeard, there's nothing you can do from being in a constant dance loop. Aim your ship out of the battle area and keep bailing whenever you can until you're in the clear to repair. Upon approaching, right after you mark the edge of the battlefield on the map, raise your sails halfway. Do that before the ships spawn, 
Less water will get into your hull at a slower speed, so bailing will be more manageable. Skeleton sloops are quick to sink. Just scan their bottom deck with shots while making sure you don't get knocked off. Start the first cannonball on top deck to disable their ability to fire. Make sure to take their supply crates, as the real challenge comes later with the galleons since two sloops are equal to two cannons shooting at you, but two galleons mean eight cannons are firing at you. That's four times the difficulty. Now that you sunk the sloops and the galleons have spawned, you have two options. One, raise the sails a bit higher than half and stay in a circle on the outer edge where the circle is marked. This way they cannot turn left towards you as they are bound to the pathfinding they are assigned to. You can fire cannons at them while keeping them out of your range. This way is preferred if you are due sloping, as one can maintain the harpoon while other fires cannons, but still works as solo. 2. Which is my preferred way? Rocks. Every fleet area has rocks. If you choose the rocks, raise your sails all the way to a full stop and park parallel to the rocks. This is to take advantage of one crucial thing. Skeleton ships have no brakes, which means they are in a constant move. By doing that, they can only fire if they are on your side, making more than 50% of their time on the other side of the rock, which is a safe zone for you to patch up and be ready to fire cannons when they approach. This also applies to normal skeleton galleons. Park next to a high island, like plunder outpost or anything where they cannot see you from the other side. Sinking them will be very easy. If they crash into you, do not move away. You have to actually get closer to stay out of their cannon range. Make sure to harpoon and lock while turning the wheel slightly towards the skeleton galleon. This way, you can always bail into their ship from the damage dealt by crashing. Take from your ship and pour into theirs. This is technically more powerful than cannonballs, as skeletons cannot bail. Every drop of water in their ship stays in there. Notice that most of the time, I used my cannons on the galleons, only when I was out of their range. And by parking next to the rock, or even between them, they could not get to me and went into self-destruct mode as sometimes they crash into the big rock while sailing around you. If done right, this is very easy. It gives the highest loot of all world events. So if you found it and need to level up, why not go for it? If that's the case, please consider subscribing if you found this video helpful. Not to forget, I might be streaming right now, so check out my Twitch channel in the link below to watch me live. Thank you for watching and happy sailing!